Hello, this is Brio of Brio Shoe Productions, and today as a request, I'm going to help out a friend make their logo, but at the same time, it's a good way to teach people how to do scale animation. So, um, basically, I'm just going to recreate this logo in Swift 3D, just as it is. Um, mainly this part, you know, the, the CIS part, since I've, my friend already knows how to do the top and bottom bars there. But um, it's a great way to help out with the scaling model. So what you want to do is create a box and then scale it down just to about the size of that first bar that creates the C. And I'm going to scale it to just about there. And then what you're going to want to do is go to the scale and extend the X factor. Now the x-factor is just basically meaning you're stretching this out on the x-axis. If you were to stretch it out on the y, it would go up and down, and if you were to do it on the z, it would go uh, the depth, which is pretty much this front to back. But we're wanting to stretch that out to about as far as the top of the C makes. I'm just going to say right about there. And you're going to make sure that's selected, and go up to the advanced modeler. Now what we're going to want to do is take this pivot position and move it all the way to the end of the bar. So you'll go to uh, position, move independently, that way you can move the object and the pivot position independently without them moving together. And you're going to say pivot position, which is basically the position of this XYZ axis. And you're going to move the X coordinate all the way to the right just till you get right to the edge, kind of like that. And if you're really specific, you can zoom in and get it like real close to the edge. It doesn't really have to be perfect, but usually I like to be a perfectionist. And you would just go over here to the X coordinate and you can see that says negative 0.22, or you can do negative 0.225. Oops, that goes the other way. So you would actually do negative 0.215. Alright, that's about as close as it's going to get, and it really doesn't have to be perfect, but it's pretty close. But that's just the important part, you want to make sure that pivot position is all the way on the right, and then once you have that there, you got to make sure you put move together again, that way they'll move all together. You go back to the scene, and as you can see, the pivot position is on the end there, so instead of being in the middle, it's there on the end. Let me put that back, so that way... It's the right way. Now, what you want to do is select this and then hit Control C so you can copy it, and then Control V to paste it back in there. So you're going to take that extra bar or box that just got created, and what I'm going to do is set the angle to 90 degrees, and then I'm going to rotate that downward. And we're just going to take this and put it right here. And here's a little bit of an important thing that you're going to want to do for this logo is kind of zoom in and make sure those line up like those little angles um, actually you're going to want to put this at the bottom of that so that way it's kind of seamless there we go just make sure that lines up at the bottom of this bar and you can move it over make sure your nudge increment is actually set to a low setting so that way it doesn't go flying everywhere. Well, that kind of does go flying. But, you know, get that as close as you can. And then you can just do this to see what it'll look like. See if there's any shadows or gaps. That looks pretty seamless. Okay, so once you get that lined up, you're going to pretty much just spell out the CIS by using those bars. So you'll just do Control-C, Control-V, We'll rotate that again under 90 degrees, and then just line that up again with the bottom. And zoom in if you have to. And I uh, pretty much estimated for this logo that you're going to need eight of these boxes. If I can get this stupid camera to zoom out. <clears throat> and just for reference, I'll go back and look at that. So there's going to be a box there. Now for the next part, uh, in the actual movie itself, it kind of grows on out to become this S. 
So we're going to just say this is one bar right here. So I'm just going to extend this one out by clicking that and saying X factor. We'll just extend on out. And that's kind of giving away what's going to happen next for the whole animation process, but um, I'll get to that in a minute. So there we have the CIS in its final product. And what you're going to want to make sure is that the beginning of each of these boxes is where it's going to start to grow out from. So, you know, the direction that the CIS is going to go in, you know, want to make sure your pivot is at the opposite end. So, you know, it starts to grow from here and it goes out and then it comes up and then it just goes on like that. Yeah, so you want to make sure that pivot position is there. That pivot position is there, and all the way on throughout. So that's on the back. That's going to grow up. That's going to grow pretty much all the way out. That one's going to grow up, so you want the pivot position down there. That's going to grow that way. That's going to grow that way, and that's going to grow that way. Okay, so now the fun begins with the whole animating of every single one of these. So first, what you're going to want to do is click on each one of these and set the X factor to zero. And that'll pretty much get rid of it. Like it's invisible. You'll get this little box here, which basically you're going to want to set like the Z factor. Yeah, all these to zero. Set all of this to zero. Make sure that's on the scale. Set to zero. So now we're going to begin the animation process. So turn on the animation, and I have it set to 18 frames per second. And what I'm going to do is probably go out to frame, we'll say 15 for the first box. So set your um, frame indicator right there on the 15, and then you're going to say X factor at 0.5. This was point. 07 and this was 0 0.07 and actually what you're going to want to do is go back to this frame right here and make sure these are 0 0.07 and I'm going to show you what that did See? That's just basically it. It'll grow out to there. And then you'll go to the next frame. Go to the next box. And make sure that's at 0.07 for the Y factor. 0.07 for the Y factor. Or the Z factor. And then you're going to go out to frame 30. And we're going to say how many frames long we want it to be which it was probably about 50 0.5 I mean and then they'll start to get the animation going see alright now we got this little thing appearing right here so we're gonna have to fix that um, box 2 what you're gonna want to do is make sure this right here it has the red all in it on the scale so that way it won't appear when the animations going and that's just basically it for the whole um, scale factor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of them so that way we can see the final product, but I'm just going to fast forward through it all. So that should just basically do this. And voila. That's basically it. You would just render that and do whatever tinkering you need to do from there on. If you have any extra questions, just uh, send me a comment or message me, and I'll be willing to help out.